Welcome to our coverage of the X-Wing Sword Championships here on the Less Than Geek channel. My name is Travis. And I'm Peyton. And this game is a semi-final game, uh, top four round, from uh, the Dogs of War Store Championship in Palm Bay, Florida, that was held on January 17th. So on the left side here, we have Peyton himself. Hello. And on In the, the game right, and on the audio. Yeah. And uh, on the right, we have uh, our other... Uh, a teammate here, uh, Joe Laporta, and Rev Joe, and uh, so Peyton, uh, what do you got going on here? Well, we're doing the old uh, two big ships versus two big ships, right? Fun times. I got Han with R two D two and C three PO for the tankiness. Mm -hmm. I got Lone Wolf for mini a reroll and the title for more tankiness. Nice. Then I have a generic Wild Space Fringer. With the Outrider title and a heavy laser cannon. Yeah. Basically and going for cheap range th range three cannons. Right. Uh, sort of a Dash Jr. there mixed in with Han. Uh, yeah, Joe's got uh, the, obviously the Decimator and Fire Spray there. Um, his Decimator is uh, the Rear Admiral uh, Chirinu. Um, and he's got uh, engine upgrade on there that you can see. And uh, Rebel Captive and Darth Vader. Um, I think more is a uh, answer to maybe if he came across some phantoms or something. And then he's got uh, Boba Fett with uh, the uh, Lone Wolf as well. So it's interesting that you both uh, have that in common too. And uh, Recon Specialist, which, you know, the combination of those two cards makes it uh, just a really versatile, efficient ship. He does have the Slave 1 title on there just for... Uh, Aesthetics, you know, why not, right? It's Boba Fett. Love the flavor. And uh, he said that card was doing work for him all day, so, you know, who knows. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I've been basically setting up um, all day, kind of, uh, I'll call him Dash. Right. In the corner. <laughs> not, not basically to try to get a feel for what my opponent was going to go after. Mm -hmm. But this is actually a rematch from earlier today. So mm -hmm. our, I already know Joe is going to be trying to donut hole. Right dash as much as possible yeah donut holing being getting in range one the blind spot where you can't use uh any attack because of the title with the heavy laser cannon and also being a rematch he knows that i'm going to win if <laughs> it ends up being a one-on-one -on -one match right the tankiness of han becomes a massive problem yeah that one-on-one -on -one matchup when he's got c3po and rtd2 and the title and you're more or less just negating three hits around you're virtually unkillable. And if Lone Wolf rolls correctly, I can neg negate four around. Right. So even range one ends up being, you know, not not exactly what you want to see. Right. And, uh, yeah, they could do some work on you maybe at range one, but then, of course, they're getting shot range one right back, and they might not have all those uh, all that mitigation themselves. So particularly if it's the Decimator. But, you know, both I could maybe fare a little better, but it's still a tall order. But, yeah, he... Um, he looks like he's just kind of uh, beelining straight for you here. Now, I, this build also uh, kind of allows the Outrider to basically soak damage. Right. I'm, I'm looking for at least one kill against another two ship build before the Decimator, I mean before the Outrider is uh, yeah, finished. Yeah, just kind of trading. Yeah, as, as long as he's getting those those howitzer shots off, those yeah. laser cannon shots, yeah. then I don't really care if he's taking damage. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, it, at the end of the day, he's, I say only, but only 42 points, so uh, if, you, if you trade him for a Decimator or something, I guess his Boba Fett there is comparable, he's like 44 or so. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's not just about the points, it's about, uh, just like we said earlier, the one-on-one -on -one matchup, once uh, you're down to that and, you know, Han's able to block three hits around, he's virtually uh, unkillable. Now the Decimator using that engine upgrade... Not only now, but basically the entire match will be trying to get into that range one sweet yeah. spot. Yeah, engine upgrade is clutch on these uh, big ships. Um, it's, you know, people talk about having it to uh, arc dodge against a bunch of low pilot skill ships, and that's certainly uh, critical for that. And it's, it's one reason why a lot of these uh, ships get murdered by a swarm of TIEs or B-Wings or something when they could have maybe arc dodged half of them. But it's also critical for uh getting up in the blind spots of these yts even even dash if uh, you've got the high pilot skill guys with engine upgrade like this uh, i know that's a problem for me a lot of the time um when i'm playing actual dash but um it's still good sometimes just for getting around the, the board quickly 
Um, I'm not sure what the hell is going on here. Yeah, apparently, Joe. Uh, oh, yes, I'm on the wrong base. Yeah. Wow. The ship. <laughs> yes. yes. I, I thought I didn't the figures see were on the wrong base. Yeah, he has the ships in the right places. They're just. Yeah, the cardboard or whatever was wrong. He probably could have just switched the cardboard or something. Yeah. I thought I didn't see a rear arc on the uh, <laughs> Boba Fett, but I thought it was maybe just uh, not showing up or something. Yeah, I mean, obviously it, just, it didn't affect <laughs> gameplay at all. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, uh, since then I finally got him to um, I set him up with the Decimator being on the giant, uh, huge capital ship uh, peg. So not only is it more stable and uh, keeps it up above everything so it's not bumping into everything with the model but that would hopefully allow him to tell the two apart <laughs> i didn't i didn't realize that it happened now i'm working with the uh the dice app yeah that's why my phone is on the uh the yep. table yep and uh some people I, there's a couple local players that uh are renowned for using it in this area and a lot of people uh either hate it or love it or you know it's very, it seems very uh polarizing so you know they they were excited to see uh, another person come in and use it and uh, it seems like every time someone claims that you're rolling really hot and they're thinking that it's uh, some sort of rigged app then your dice go cold right yep <laughs> right there uh it was like han pop decimator for three damage because even at yeah, range three yeah. yeah even at range three I'm, I'm basically trying to take decimator out first yeah so all my shots are probably going to be headed that direction yeah, is there like a particular reason why you wanted to target it first, or? Well, the problem is shooting at uh, the the slave one. Right. I feel like without, especially without predator. Right. Which would give me, you know, normally average probably around two to three hits. Mm -hmm. Is not going to deal any actual damage. Right. I'm yeah. Basically trying to guarantee damage. Yeah, that's probably a good call because right about here, basically with uh, all four of your ships. You know, more or less, each of you can target whichever one you want, kind of. You know, two on one. And at this point, both of his ships are doing what I don't want to do and shooting at a, a two evasion ship. Right. And they're going to end up both doing zero damage. Yeah, and I and I can definitely see that. Um, like you said, since you have Lone Wolf instead of maybe Predator, and you're evading, and you can't reroll blank or eyeballs or whatever, you have to, it has to be a blank. Uh, your accuracy is down slightly in exchange for more defensive power. But um, so that that round ends up me and, deal, I, and I guess you're, you're too close damage. to use it anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I used I deal six damage to my opponent without taking any. Yeah, which that's exactly <laughs> sounds I pretty good. To. Yeah. So it, going up against Fett, having uh, who who does look like he would be able to lone wolf if you were shooting at him. He does look far enough away. Yeah. Uh, combined with the double focus, yeah, he's he's got a lot of uh, armor. No, I I did a three and a barrel just trying to uh, attempt to get out of that decimators. Yeah. Which so really is not going to work since he has engine upgrade. He's yeah. going to be able to reach anyway as long as he did a three. Which yeah, it was worth a shot. Um, obviously, you want to be able to maintain fire on the target that you would prefer to focus on. But um, by doing that maneuver, it probably does allow you to at least take a pot shot at FET instead of maybe being too close to both of them or something like that. Um, I suppose my, yeah. my second option could have just been a basically move forward one barrel roll back towards him and make him ram into me yeah they're definitely gonna win something to that um especially my low, low pilot skill i can easily do that yeah yeah sometimes that's the best option um again even even with the actual dash when you're against something like that uh the the higher pilot skill engine upgrade um sometimes that's that's the best thing to do and then on the next turn you're able to juke him kind of and he's got to fly past you a bit yeah you also notice I'm going to end up stacking a lot of stress on Han because I'm always shooting Decimator. Right. And he's always going to have Rebel Captive yep. popping me for stress. So I'm stressed. And, and you got to just do some white maneuvers and stuff just to go where you need to go instead of doing greens all the time. Yeah, I wasn't even wasting my time with the greens. Yeah. Yeah, especially with that rock there. I mean, the, that one hard was pretty much the only option. Yeah, and it ended up putting me completely out of arc of FET. Yeah, on you're both in ships. that blind spot. That is... God, that is just deadly. <laughs> he can't. He can't really afford that because uh, essentially this turn he's, you know, you're basically looking at the one on one, uh, the end game that you want that we were talking about. You know, where he just doesn't have a chance. That's essentially like for this turn you're already in that. 
Uh, so we got some sort of crit there on the decimator. Yeah, it is negative one agility on a decimator. Well, the most uh, effective. Of yeah, that's decimator. like getting an injured pilot on a uh, academy pilot or something. You know. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, so you're able to uh, shoot Fett. It looks like uh, you know with you, but uh, with the outrider rider, the heavy laser cannon, even if the other one's too close, so yeah. you at least get something. And this this is somewhat how it, it played out in our first game, right. where he's basically trying to get both of his ships in range one of the decimator. I mean, the outrider. Right. Yeah, it seems like that would be pretty difficult to pull off with all these large ships. Um, you know, obviously, with the large bases, they can be closer together, but just the placement of it's also why, there. It's also why Han is not trying to take any advantage of Lone Wolf. I need him to basically protect mm. that donut hole. It, at right. least punish people who are trying to get in range one. Yeah, it would be difficult to stay uh, far enough away from it and not just be throwing pretty much every shot at range three. Yeah. It, I mean, you know, staying far enough away from your other ship to activate Lone Wolf while still covering it, you'd be probably shooting at range three all the time. No, just to go back to the uh, dice app always being so great, uh, that was in fact a zero hit uh, heavy laser cannon on the oh, dice yeah. app. Yeah, and you don't have a modifier there, but still you expect to see a couple One of One or hits. two. Yeah. Now, see, this is interesting here. This is where uh, I guess you're considering maybe barrel rolling back and... Making him ramping. Bl yeah, blocking him like you said, and then uh, on the next round being able to kind of jailbreak past him here in the air a bit. That's that seems like a pretty good way to go here. Um Well I know Fett's Fett's gotta have he's gotta turn. He, I mean yeah. he, there's no way he's gonna go straight again. He's gonna continue to be out of arc for the most part. Right. Yeah. You can probably get the decimator to run into you. Boa Fett will probably get a good shot on you. He might be maybe too close, but uh he might just run into the back of the decimator there and then uh you can basically use its base as a buffer to uh, maybe have uh, or, you know him GB just outside of range one, so you can at least do something. He, he did a, a slow maneuver. He's just using the, the five straight to yeah to make sure to guide his uh, ship to forward. Keep it straight. Yeah, and there it is. That huge model overhanging and bumping everything around, but yeah, it's one of the big problems. That's why you need it on that giant pillar that comes with like the uh, the Tainov and the Rebel transport and things like that. Yeah. yeah, he is the in the back there. The ships are not just for the other ships to come with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he had to do the turn because he needs to get and he needs to get shots off. It's, you can't just mm -hmm. avoid shooting for two two rounds. It's terrible. Yeah, and there go all the ships to get. <laughs> yeah, all these fat big ships. Um, yeah, it's hard to see if he's gonna be. He might be within range one of you. He's basically trying to. Actually, figure out the the facing yeah, direction go, here. Yeah, go backwards along the thing. That looks right. <laughs> if you can just get the template out, yeah, I guess fine tuning it a bit. Um, it is it is hard to keep an accurate maneuver yeah. with these large bases as well. So it's looking like I mean, Fett's going to be shooting at the uh, twenty four hundred there at the outrider, regardless, I guess. But it it does look like another round where Han's probably going to be in the blind spot and. Um, I feel like the way he needs to go about this matchup, um, and you know, this is his first couple times playing against it. Maybe you know he's just trying to do different things, or he's a little too worried about the the blind spot with the heavy laser scan. I feel like his only real option, because if you do get in that in game one on one, he's pretty much just hose against the Falcon, is to basically blitz both of his ships at the Falcon, focus everything in it, and just pray that he can take it down. You know, by the time uh, he's still got one of his guys left to you know then chase around the you know, generic. You've only got so many tricks on that thing, and yeah. either one of them could get up close. You're you're pretty much hosed, even if uh, you know, even if that decimator only has you know five health left or something, and that that YT is full. If he can keep boosting up in there, you know, you'd be all right. But uh, going about it this way, he's got round after round where Fett has no shot on the Falcon, and uh, if he wants to try to do anything to the Falcon, it's just like it's already in the end game. So. You know, at the rate he's going, he's probably going to be down one of these ships by the time uh, he deals with this uh, Outrider. Yeah. I'm not sure what all that discussion there was about, or you remember? <laughs> something uh, about dials or something? It was probably about asteroids, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. 
just probably just talking through you know we're all from the same group here so they're probably just saying you know well, i was thinking about doing this and maybe you would do that and yeah that's probably what i was thinking. yeah just that kind of talk not any sort of dispute we got a shot looks yeah, like this, going over the rock yeah it's han at decimator and i actually use han's ability here yeah to produce yet more terrible rolls and deal try to deal one damage and he rolls an evade with that that rock boost nice so I don't yep. do any damage. Because even with uh, zero agility and a minus one agility crit, yep. you still get the still get the rock and the range modifiers and stuff. Yep. And this is when the decimator gets... Or the... Uh, I keep... Yeah, the, the Outrider. Name, yeah. Outrider. The other Wave 5 ship. Yeah. Boba Fett uh, throwing two dice at you. Or, you know, three dice, two hits. Yeah. Yep, I guess somehow he must be just outside of range one then, because he didn't roll four of them. So you should be able to blast him back. Seems like, yeah, I guess the angle that you guys are at, you know. Yeah, it is a weird angle, because Decimator yeah. is making us both look weird. Yeah. <laughs> Dash continues his... Okay, so that... Terrible. Yeah, you got... Uh, that was a Falcon hit. Yeah, you got pinged on the Falcon. Yeah, yeah those first... Few shields on the Falcon are kind of a freebie anyway until you get to where you can start activating R2D2. And then it becomes degenerate. Yeah. Uh, and this is where we totally forgot to re uh, to measure range. Oh, so. As, as to whether it was range one or not. And I allow Joe to go okay. an extra die. Yeah, it looked to me like it would have to be because uh, it, it, the uh, size of that base. Uh, for for the decimator is equal to two normal ship bases, right? Like uh, two uh, a two straight maneuver template. Yeah. One range increment is equal to two and a half of those. So it's possible if you were maybe all the way on opposite corners, maybe you know, but you're not quite 100 yeah, percent kind of in the middle with my yeah the front of my ship. Yeah, if you were all the way on that left corner, maybe, but. Okay, well, you know, it looks like uh, you still got a couple shields left on that guy. He hasn't got a ton of damage through on you. No. Um, so here's here was my problem during this maneuver. I wasn't sure as to what maneuvers would actually fly me off the board. I was concerned. Yeah. And ended up not being able to make that <laughs> one straight. Yeah. Yeah, that one straight just quite doesn't clear. Um, looks like from looking at it, yeah, the two straight... It would have been pretty close to the to having your corner clip there at the edge of the board. Yeah. Um, and he ends up double ramming again. Because basically this is the situation he wants. I'm not shooting with the the outrider, yeah. and he's just getting free shots. They're not – obviously he's taking no actions, but – Yeah. And Han didn't do anything last round. Right. I think a two straight – man, yeah, that's hard. It's so hard to say. Um – you definitely, uh, you could have done probably a th like a three bank towards your right. Well, i say it was also inexperienced because yeah. I thought about that, but then... You're still going to have to look pretty out. close. Yeah, yeah better Especially. safe than sorry for riding off the whole map, but... Um, this is Han continuing to shoot at Decimator. Right. Ends up getting a crit, though. Uh, damn shins array. Well, yeah, that is actually uh, a meeting book, right? Um, you know, so you can't focus or target lock, and then uh, since engine upgrade actually does add that to your action bar, he can't boost either. Yeah. So uh, basically all he can do for an action is just play with trying to turn it off. Um, he does still have that little mini focus or whatever, but... And this time he remembered to roll uh, <laughs> four dice. For Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah range warning. Yep. Get Still two, only getting one hit. Yeah, two, you get two hits because yeah. obviously you can't focus, and yeah, and I got one of eight natural. Yeah, so just all three, you just kind of did like a one straight river. Well, the decimator maybe did it too, but just ended up running into each other. Huh? Just yeah. a parking lot. <laughs> That's wacky. Like I said, it, it seems it seems like the best position for him just because he's yeah in the free shots basically. Yeah. Um, like I said, it, it would maybe be ideal for him to focus down the Falcon, but uh, it seems like uh, well, I mean, he he's just not really playing it that way, you know. He doesn't it, even have the Falcon in arc for Fett. Yeah, as yeah, well. yeah. That, that's just what I'm saying. So uh, you know, saying it's an ideal situation, 
you know, it would be nice to uh, be able to do that. There's the three bank. Yeah. The, the, finally, I'm like, I can't yeah. stay in this position for any more turns. But um, so but he's definitely going it. about it with uh, maybe not quite that game plan for this particular game. Um, he does seem like he's keying in on the other guy. So I guess it's ideal as far as that's concerned. But um, another problem he has, even if he, like I said, he, even if he was trying to maybe whittle down the Falcon right now, if Fett doesn't have an arc, there's no point in shooting one ship. At a Falcon with a C-3PO. Right. Mm -hmm. You're basically just giving him a free evade every turn. Yep. Yep, yep. You gotta you gotta have both of them on it, or you know, you might as well just be pinging away at the other guy you know, if you've only got the one. And I think he felt at this point he needs to take out Dash because he's been shooting him a bunch. Now, see, he just turret locked there, so I guess, uh, you know, maybe just forgot about that crit. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because... Uh, he, if, if you're sure it was the sensor array. Yeah. Um, that's why they make those little uh, crit hit reminder tokens that no one likes to use. Yeah, I use them at every time I got a crit <laughs> at this tournament. <laughs> uh, you know, there's always, there's a billion of them around, you know, just getting a little plug in for those. Yeah. And Han Rams, he doesn't care. He's got three stress tokens on him still. There's nothing like being stressed and getting the hard turns are red and then doing that and then uh, the guy going, oh, well, uh, so you just did a red maneuver while stressed and I'm going to fly you off the board. Oh, really? Oh, gee, maybe I should use the reminder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, Joe seems to have a knack for getting in these situations where the ships just kind of continually run into each other. Uh, at a, another tournament since this one, um, th there was a round where uh, he had his decimator, maybe both of his ships again, but at least one of them against a uh, falcon or whatever, you know, something similar to this. And uh, they were down near the corner of the board and somehow just kind of ran into each other for about three turns because neither one of them wanted to fly off or go, you know, do this or that. And, yeah, they just kind of sat on each other for about three turns. And that was a a haunting into a three-hit natural. Well, there you go. Haunt oh, shooting at Fett. The Fett got one evade, so. Yeah, the dice picking up a little bit. No, no, he actually got two evades, sorry. Yeah, Fett does at least have the ability to. Uh, That's why I wasn't shooting. Get out Fett. of some shots. That's why I don't like shooting at him. Yep. So this looks like he's, you, yeah, range one out the rear arc on your other guy. Yep. Yeah, I wasn't. He got three hits, and I ended up rolling two now. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go again. Where if he shot at the Falcon, it's pretty much a waste because uh, he's only getting the one shot on it. So. Yep. Range two. Yeah, it seems like he's getting. He's definitely able to get some good damage in this round on that guy, and he's going to be going down pretty quick. There's the mini focus from Chiriner's ability. Yep. So Dash takes that that crit. It's a uh, leaf stun pilot. Uh, the overlap take yep. automatic damage one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been bad a uh, turn or two ago. Yeah. <laughs> but now. Oh, see, there you are using those uh, tokens. Yeah, there that's you what go. I told you, man. And now he gets shot back, having loose cannon. I guess he didn't end up using the target lock on you anyway, so. Uh, looks like you got one hit or something. No, I got two hits. Oh, okay. Decimator takes them. Okay. So, yeah, I'm trying to see. It's the old uh, I focus and then roll no eyeballs. <laughs> looks like he's got about seven damage on that thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, so he's got five hole remaining on the Decimator. Uh, well, that's puts it relatively on pace of what you're saying, where um, by the time your uh, outrider there goes down, you just need to trade for one and you're good to go. I mean, if, if you think about it, they're basically at this similar hit points. Yeah. I mean, they're both... And even even if he has it. one round with both ships on the Falcon, you know, the Falcon's still in good enough shape. You can, you know, take that extra hit, you know, two or three extra damage at one time, and then kill it, and then you'll still have them on lockdown, you yeah. know. You'll still be in good enough shape. My concern was I need to keep him out of both their ranges. I can't take both shots from them. There's a good right. chance he gets killed. Right, right. So I'm basically kind of flying away from the fight. Yeah, and again, Bofet's going to have uh, potentially some arc problems here. I mean, you know, he'll he'll be able to shoot at Han just fine, I guess. But uh, And he might be just out of range of the uh, generic guy anyway. But if he was in range, it looks like he would have an arc problem. And, uh, yeah, but he does get that double focus... Uh, not a whole lot of Lone Wolf going on this game. Um, on either side. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you, you want to try to use it if you can, but...
but there are some situations, maybe certain matchups, whatever, where you know you got to do what you got to do, especially with only two ships. And um, you know it's nice to obviously be able to take advantage of it, but you can't let it uh, dictate your choices sometimes when you you just got to you know fo- get both guys focused on somebody or whatever. I kind of feel like or it's, avoid it's whatever. It's more of an in-game scenario. Yeah, just with the extra uh, evade rerolls. It's just you want to use it as much as you possibly can, as long as it's not more of a detriment to your to your uh, you know board state, basically. Yeah. So we got uh, nice little range one because I yep just got by him and I'm getting two hits and a crit, which Ouch. is the minus one damage guard. That, uh, the yeah the minus one primary yeah or, or nice. Yeah, so he's uh, he's down to two hole, and he's got a couple of million crits. Doesn't seem like he's very he's long for this world. Um, yeah, obviously he hasn't really gotten any use out of uh, Darth Vader in this game, um, and he won't Probably. now. Um, but you know, I, again, he, I think he just kind of had it in there as his answer for if he can't if he ran across a fan or something. He doesn't have. Um, a, a gunner. He doesn't have a like a ten pilot skill with veteran instincts to shoot before it cloaks. He doesn't. You know, he's got the captive, but if it shoots it both at first or something, you know, it, it just is nice, I guess, for him to have that. But there's there's definitely some uh, games, some matchups where it uh, paid off for him. Um, I've played against him a couple times where he was able to make use of it against Corn, uh, you know, and take him out before he would just before he was able to like run away and recharge with R two D two for three rounds and come back, you know. So. And right now, Han actually reached what is called the sweet spot for R two D two. Yep. No crit cards, no cards of any type. Yep. But no shields. Yep. So Ex- I get a free shield. Exacties. For no for no apparent reason. <laughs> Yep, because uh, for those that aren't 100% familiar with how R2-D2 works, because uh, he, he has shown up in a few key matches, but um, until recently hasn't been super widespread. Uh, the exact way he works is at the end phase, you can automatically recover the shield. That just happens regardless. Um, you just have to um, not have any shields remaining in order to trigger him. So, you know, that's where I was saying like earlier on, uh, in the earlier rounds, you couldn't use them. Um, and then, after you recover the shield, you roll a die, an attack die, and if you get a normal hit, so it's a 3 and 8 chance, then you randomly flip up, you know, again, random selection, um, one of your face-down damage cards. So, like Peyton was saying there, if you have no damage cards, you just get the shield back, no problem. But even if you do, you know, it's only a 3 and 8 chance that one of them flips up, and then if it does flip up maybe it's something that doesn't really matter uh we were talking earlier about how the uh the crit that makes you discard a secondary weapon is one of those that after it resolves flips down so sometimes you get that and you just keep flipping it up and that's you actually love to see that one yeah <laughs> ask me how many times that's happened the answer yeah. is zero you know but, but it can yeah there you know some of them are more annoying than others but even uh even the stress token one i mean you're already flying around with a million stress tokens anyway so you wouldn't really seem to care um joe tried to get rid of that crit and didn't but it's actually not going to matter because i'm going to yeah smoke the death later. yeah those some of the crits that you get on the falcon could be your only out if you do get down to that one-on-one situation yeah um, there's some dirty ones there there is a few uh and, and blind of pilot's kind of annoying makes it maybe if it keeps coming back the falcon's not gonna be able to kill you but you know that may not be enough because you just need to kill it. You got a hit in the crit on Decimator, yeah. killing it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's 12. It's done. Um, probably the worst crit the Falcon can get for that end game is the minus one agility because then, uh, unless you shoot at it range three or through an asteroid or something, they won't be able to use C3PO at all. So you've taken away one of those three evades right there, basically. And then. Um, and, and in your case, you wouldn't be able to, you know, roll get anything on a lone wolf either. Yep. Um, but then also, if you think about it, if they if they spend their time, if they spend their action trying to turn that off to, so that they can get that stuff back, um, then uh, that round they didn't use the title for an evade either. So even if they do turn it off, they get C three PO for that round, but they're still down one, and 
you know, God forbid if they don't turn it off, then they're basically down all their stuff except R2. So that's probably the worst one that could cause them to try to run away and turn it off. And then R2 can turn it back on. Yeah, and then, and then by the time they come back into the fighter, you catch up to them, he might just find it again. So that's definitely one you want on there. Um, that's why, you know, it, the Falcon, um, having being in the situation it is here where it's got the full uh, eight hole points, um, you know, once it gets to that point where it's one on one and it's essentially mitigating all, all the damage and not taking anything, it, it can win if it only has three hole left or eight hole left. It doesn't matter that much. But if you do have all those cards on it, there's a chance you've got one of those in there that comes up. So um, it's still, you know, somewhat beneficial to at least have uh, that damage on there by the time you get to that phase. And then if you might get lucky and get just the right one and be able to push through two or three damage in that one round and win. I was actually uh, warning Joe here at one point that once I finally did all these green maneuvers... Because there were several rounds there where we didn't shoot. Yeah. Once I do all these green maneuvers, get I finally, again. Yeah, finally get all those the yep. stress off, I'm going to get them. Yeah, and then there you go, because now you're getting that extra evade from the title. And, you know, R2-D2 is good to go. And, uh, yeah, he's just he's in a bad place. And, uh, you know, you still got the potential, if he you know doesn't watch exactly where he is here, to take a couple pot shots with that uh, heavy laser cannon. You know, he's still got to land three more hits that's going to take him another shot or two just to finish that guy off so he's not getting blasted by that and uh yeah so it's not even a one-on-one situation here yeah and with the double focus and lone wolf finally coming into play yeah. it, he does average pretty high rolls yeah he does have that going for him at least um you know the the, the fire spray is basically just all about being balanced and efficient and uh you know, the recon specialist just improves upon that. And in the, say, wave two, wave three days, or I guess uh, wave three, I think, is when the recon specialist came out. But, um, you know, that, that was definitely a fairly popular thing to see with just some generic bounty hunters and all. Now with Lone Wolf, it just uh, kicks it up a notch. And that last round was a uh, an example of he, he rolled three hits. Right. And at the beginning of the next round, hey, look, I saw the exact same health. Yep, doesn't do anything. Yeah, um, yeah, he just you C three PO one. Mm-hmm. You use your evade token for from another the, from the action, and you lose the your yep. one shield, and then you just put it back. <laughs> yep. So yeah, unless you get some range ones that net some hole damage on there that that give you some bad cards, you know, with with getting some good rolls on defense and not taking a bunch of damage in return, yeah, he's he's. Just kind of hosed. Um, now, I end up ramming him. Yeah, this is good for him because uh, this gives him, I guess, a round to try to finish off that other uh, ship without the Falcon getting free shots here. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're definitely going to be getting three or four green dice there, it looks like, but it could happen. Uh, Wolf, two eyeball. Yeah, that yeah. looks like it was cocked. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting a couple hits through, so it's not going to be able to kill you. But Actually hitting a crit. And guess what? How many evades I roll? And that's right, zero. Dead deck. <laughs> was it a direct hit? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yep. Yeah. Well, <sighs> there you go. <laughs> that does happen. But see, now the problem is so we're that's... still we're still down to two ships, yep. and on a one on one situation, yep. I'm putting all my money on Han. Yeah, that was that was about the best thing that could happen. You know, in, in the situation he's in, was that right there, and it still just doesn't seem like good for him. Um, he's having to. Take a hit from the asteroid here. Yeah, hits a shield. Um, Boba Fett maybe has a chance here in the sense that, uh, like we were saying, if you do feel like you need to get at range one and try to get uh, some actual damage, I mean, not you, but the opponent needs to get range one to get some actual damage through to the Falcon, maybe get lucky and put some bad cards on you that you find with R2-D2. Um it, it, but then they worry about taking too much damage in return and just dying anyway. That you know the decimator, that's a lot more likely to happen than uh, Boa Fett here because you know with a couple of greens and you know, the lone wolf and recon, he might get away from uh, your attack rolls since you're uh, not focusing or anything. So that looks like exactly what's going on here. We got the range one situation. Yeah. So as long as he can evade out of it and try to get four hits on you. Pretty much his only hope. I end up haunting, so I end up getting two hits. He gets no vase with all the blanks. Yeah. 
that does suck. Uh, that that can happen too, you know. So there you go. He just took two hits. So even kind of in the ideal situation there. But then he responds. He doesn't get the greens the way he needs. So uh, a bunch of symbols and ends up with four hits. Okay, that one I guess is yeah. okay. Yep. He's denoting it there. So yep. at least that went his way. Um, of course, you get to re-roll the uh, green to maybe get four. Yep. But, yeah, it was a yeah, focus. So. End up taking two. So there's at least something there. So and now then, we'll see you're actually rolling a die here. Yeah. That's a focus, it looks like. And you might wonder why I'm not using the dice app to roll the die. Yeah. I have a terrible reds naturally on dice, so I assume <laughs> that anytime I'm rolling a negative, such as asteroids right. or R2, I'm going to pull a red die out of my box. Well, also, I've heard you mention that if you just have to roll one die for a card effect or something like that, it's kind of annoying to I mean, you know, I, load up the app for it. Or yeah, because I always turn off my phone in between not shooting yeah. to save battery. Cause Especially I'm playing when you're playing eight, eight rounds. rounds. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, every once in a while I might actually want to call somebody. Right. And then we get back to the range three pot shots, which is what I'm I'm totally fine with. Yeah, it looks like he doesn't even have arc on you on this round. Yeah, the so, problem is uh, <laughs> it just makes it even worse. The problem is I'm only hitting getting two hits, and he's rolling two evades basically all the time. Yeah, but you know if neither one of you kills each other, you're still gonna win. So uh, his his bow fed is 44 points, and Hans, you know, yeah. close to 60. So that's what 56 or something. Yeah. So basically, if he's not in range one, he cannot deal damage. Yep. And the only real thing he's trying to do at range, you know, two or three, is to make me burn that shield. So at least I have to roll to see if I turn that crit up. Right. When it could just be uh, the, yeah, yeah, the secondary be. weapon failure. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, you gotta take whatever chance you got. Um. Yeah. You know, Boba definitely has to uh, still go around things and you have double the fire arc of a normal ship but it's still surprising how many times you just end up with the opponent in your blind spot because you just have to go around stuff um he was originally playing the navigator and doing the whole fetigator thing uh and once in a while that's helpful but most of the time it just isn't over the course of a match anywhere near as helpful as having the recon specialist plus um, it has synergy with Lone Wolf because uh, since Lone Wolf only rerolls blanks, can't reroll eyeballs, you really want those extra focus tokens because otherwise you're going to roll a bunch of eyeballs that you don't have the focus for and you can't reroll. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it, it still just doesn't seem like it uh, would have helped all that much. You still would have had some of those turns where he's just going to have to be in the blind spot. And those pauses normally is because I'm trying to decide whether to haunt or not. Right. Which, yeah, unfortunately there's a bit of a glare on the phone yeah. there to see exactly. It's basically, you get one hit, one blank, and one eyeball, and you have to decide, right. should I lone wolf that one blank, or right. should I just re-roll the whole thing? Yeah. Normally, I just go ahead and re-roll the whole thing. Yeah, that's probably the right call. Because um, you're going to average at least one hit anyways. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're averaging one and a half on three dice, so you're hoping that second roll just gives you two. Um, you yeah. know, ideally you get, I guess, two hits and maybe like one blank, and then you just lone wolf that one. Um, of course that's I where, you know, Predator, it's like I was just saying about the eyeballs with, with uh, fire spray, you know. It's, oh, man, he clipped the rock there. That's Yeah. Yeah, it could be the death blow. It just getting shot for free there unless you run into him. But, um, but yeah, which ain't going to happen. Nope. But, uh, yeah, you know, the, the uh, Predator would be able to re-roll an eyeball if you got, like, two hits in an eyeball or something. But um, the, the Lone Wolf gives you the defensive component as well. I think I ended up not focusing there for no particular reason. <laughs> not, uh, or you mean not evading? Or, oh, oh, right, yeah. because yeah, he's on shot. rock. So just out of habit, you probably evaded, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, better evade. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. It looks like a focus to me. Looking at the tokens, so. Yeah. Hard to remember sometimes. Yeah, I, I, up, I think you did. I ended up getting good Yeah, you just spent it on the red dice. So. Oh, okay, yeah. So I got two hits and a crit, but Joe ends up getting two evades. Right. So That's, he takes the crit. That's still, though, I mean, he's down to four hole, and yeah. you've got nine health that's uh, virtually, it, you know, it takes a Herculean effort to get through even just one or two of it. Yeah, you got to risk getting a range one, and yeah. my range one shots are going to do more damage. Basically, unless I'm a terrible roller, which I don't am. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
yeah, it's it's hard to say what you know. It, it definitely is kind of demoralizing to to look at something like this and be on the other side of it and just it feels so hopeless. Um, the semifinal match at Worlds this past year was similar to this, but with two Falcons. And one ha Paul Heaver had the R2D2 when everybody else was still playing Gunners because they wanted those against Phantoms. Yep. And um, that was the difference is that the one Falcon was invincible and the other one would get pecked away at damage here, damage here. The, the Gunner one was worth one more point, so he did have to actually kill it and not just outlast it. And that was kind of the one chance that uh, his, his buddy Ira there had um, if he had been able to just get the dice to go that way and outlast him he would have pulled it off but there was plenty of time and you know that was kind of the first time that a lot of people got exposed to seeing something like this and uh, this, this is another I don't know if you example. noticed there um, when I attacked Joe he rolled no evade right. why do that that's right I went six blanks <laughs> three blanks re-roll with Han three more blanks three more blanks he of course did not have me an arc so right I mean you can kind of think of it as oh maybe you know you just Kind of ignore that turn. Right. Keep, keep going. Yeah, and, and it may be easier said than done, but it would be interesting to see uh, this kind of taken, this match taken from the top where he does try to go all in with both ships on the Falcon and focus it down, and it, it will give you more free shots with the uh, heavy laser cannon. He's going to just have to ignore it. Um yeah, but again, like we said, if as, as long as he takes out the Falcon, even if he has to trade one of the guys for it, if he can uh, stay in the blind spot after that, he'll be just fine. Uh, Fett could even, it, it probably, if he was like full health, I mean, even if he's not in the blind spot, Fett could probably slug it out with the heavy laser cannon a bit. See, this is another uh, attempt at me to say, hey, let's get in a range one and actually do something. Right. I proceed to roll two two crits yeah, after Yeah, just trying to finish him off instead of flying around Yes, forever. he rolls two evades and then shoots me back, dealing <laughs> yeah. two damage. Yeah. And at this point, I'm, I kind of say to myself, not going your way. what's the point going to range one? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Every time I do, he does, he takes like nothing? I, I guess, to some extent, you were down near the corner of the board, it was kind of inevitable to pass back by him, but... Yeah, but th that, that last round is an example of right. when people think, oh, it's impossible yeah it is technically possible yeah to kill it, a super tanky obese han yeah this particular situation may be closer to impossible though because you still had all those hole points you know you're not sitting three or four hole away from dead by the time you get into this phase of the game yeah that would be yeah a bit of a different animal um that finally takes a damage yeah still rolling two evades every time i think he rolls two evades for the rest of the game he does seem like he's uh, he's down to two hit points there. No, maybe three. Uh, yeah, he's got four hits coming back at you again, huh? Yeah. Now, I, did, I did get... Just systematically. Oh, I here did we get go. some evades, I, but I did, of course, also get some, uh, some crits. Do you know what that, that is? That is the zero pilot skill. Zero pilot skill. And then I flip up another one with R2-D2. So here we go, the selecting randomly. Yeah. And that would be... Well, direct hit. Not uh, direct hit. Yeah, those can happen too, you know, to speed things up a little bit. Um, I think minor explosion is almost more annoying because then you're potentially having to blow up and then flip back down and blow up and flip back down. It could add up to a lot more. Yeah. That's, that's one of the other just more painful ones to get. I do feel uh, like I ended up more times than not during the rounds having every single crit just flipped up. Right. The zero pilot skill is not too bad here it's it's funny because that that can be i guess you didn't you didn't have the engine upgrade on there anyway but no. i've seen you know falcons or decimators things like that with those the zero pilot skill is about the worst thing you can get when you're dealing with a bunch of b-wings or something coming after you because then you're not able to necessarily know exactly where they are and boost out of their arc and stuff like that and then and you know they're shooting before you're even getting to maybe finish one off before it shoots that sort of thing so uh, some matchups sometimes that's like the absolute worst thing to see. But when you're in this phase of the game and it's one on one, it, it it's so difficult for them to punch anything through. It doesn't really matter who's moving first or I think who's I shooting ended, first. Ended up getting that same zero pilot skill crit four times throughout the tournament. Right. And normally it actually helped. Yeah. Because then it would they would you know I ram could, into you. Yeah, or I could get a good position to get them ram me. Yeah, it's it's definitely not a 
concern. It's not one of the ones you're really worried about if you get it in this kind of a situation. And yeah, yeah. it's almost beneficial. Again, especially with the bill with no engine upgrade, I'm not too concerned about but it. But yeah, that's that's something uh, for these situations and these Falcons that I just hadn't heard too many people talk about. Uh, that's we're kind of harping on some of the different crits and really going on about it uh, as this unfolds here. Uh, just some of the things to look out for that, you know, just some, some of the things to keep in mind of the benefits of trying to get those extra damage on them before you get in this phase of the game because uh, they're they're in there. There may not be too many of them, and it's still kind of look at the draw, and you don't know if r 2 is going to turn them up or whatever, but there's a few in there that can help uh, make this not seem as hopeless as it, it you know, looks. So now Fett's getting to shoot first, gets three hits, but I ended up evading two of the damage. Yeah. A.K.A. take no damage. Yep. Uh, shooting back. Yep, two hits. Three. After uh, a getting haunting. a lone wolf one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rolling the individual. That, that looked like probably hit, hit, blank, which is ideal. So you got... But I ended up, it didn't re-roll into anything useful. I got two hits, and yeah. then Joe... After after his infinite focuses gets two yep. aids as well. Do we turn that last one up? Nope. Nope. See, and whenever I roll a hit with one of those red dice, they go back in the box and pull out a new one. <laughs> gets fired. Yeah. It's that superstition meta. So we're probably coming up pretty close on the time limit. Yeah, the round's here. almost over. I'm basically have decided I'm just going to run away after getting critted so much. I figure that it's probably my best interest to just stay at range three to do right. at all times yep yeah you're uh you're able to go a couple more turns here without probably getting a range one oh it's probably range one you on the next one but. joe's dice continue to be hot but only rolling three yep, i it, absorb two and yep lose a shield it just doesn't really matter one of those got flipped down accidentally but probably gets corrected or, or it's the pile skill one and i already have the yeah, crit token yeah <laughs> there we go on my own Yep. Shooting back. Shooting yeah, back. there you go. Yeah. Uh, couple evades. Yep. Nothing happens. Still never taking any damage. Same old, same old. And then the game ends. And uh, they call time. Yeah, that was the, yeah, the So round. there we go. Um, yeah, I mean, you could play that for another hour, and eventually Fett probably still dies because he's only got the three hole there, and, you know, you're, you're pretty much invincible. Thanks for watching our X-Wing coverage here on the Less Than Geek channel. Uh, please subscribe and stay tuned for more uh, store championship videos coming soon, and we'll see you next time.